Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Sisko and we are live on a Tuesday. And this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you from near and from far, whether you are uh, in local range of the church triumphant or whether you're in the far reaches of Triumph Ministries International Network, which goes all around the world, we welcome you today. Our focus is the United States today, uh, transitioning of power or power in flux in the political sphere is our specific and laser focus today. I welcome again all of our partners from across the United States and especially those that pray with us, your locally church triumphant family. We love you. It's always a great day when we can connect together online. It is prayer nation that God is pulling a remnant. He is pulling special forces, intercessors, people who have discernment and awareness that God is awakening in these last days, are stepping into a new understanding and revelation that has been sealed up in these last days and now being released for the church. And the church is operating and using the principles of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. We understand that the key of David is given to the church in Philadelphia. The Bible said that Jesus has that key. And that key, he says, is used to close doors that no man can open and to open doors that no man can close. So today we are operating and functioning in the power of the last man, Adam. The best that the devil has is first man, Adam, latent power of the soul. We have the full release of God's original intent for man, plus what is given to us, not as a son of God, but as the son of God, Jesus himself, who is bringing many sons to glory. He is the first fruits, the first begotten from the dead. And so he has released us from the power of death and from the law of sin and death and allowed us to walk in newness of life. The Bible says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. But we are already sons. The earth is groaning and travailing together until now, waiting for the manifestations of God's government, waiting for the manifestation of the true sons of God. In the very beginning, Adam, as the son, was given mastery over the earth. He was given authority. He was given dominion over the earth. And it's through the fall of man that that war began to play out between a good and evil between the carnal mind and the spiritual mind, between the system that Satan set up, which is the world, and he being the prince and power of the air, is now bringing blindness upon that world and its system. But in the, in the middle of that, there is also the kingdom of God and the prophetic word that God would restore, that he would put that serpent under his feet. It would bruise his heel, but he would crush his Head. So there's been a prophetic word of putting things back in order since the very fall of man. So today we are praying and operating and functioning in the power of the last man, Adam. There's not the second man, he's the last man because there's not going to be a third. And so by the power of the principle of the last, we overcome what was put in motion by the first. Now the best that the devil will ever have is those that are rebelling against God. In order for Satan to work, he must have a cooperation of rebellious people. By one man's sin, by one man's disobedience, death came into the world. So death has reigned in the world because of the disobedience, because of the rebellion of one man. Satan operates in the power of rebellion or disobedience. So God causes us to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. As we repent, we turn things back into alignment. This is why I pray about alignment all the time. This is why we are to pray for all who are in authority that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. We understand from Romans 13 that the powers that be are ordained 
of God. We know from the book of Psalms that power belongs to God, Psalm 68. We know that promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west, either from the south, but it comes from God, that God raises up and God sits down. We know from the book of Proverbs that the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turns it whatever way he wants to. He even called Pharaoh his servant, and Nebuchadnezzar uh, was prophesied that we should follow him because God had raised him up, righteous or unrighteous, God had put him there for his plan and for his purpose. So we are to pray according to 1 Timothy 2 and 1. We are to pray for all who are in authority. We are to use every type of prayer. Prayers, supplications, intercessions, and giving of thanks. We are to use every channel that is available to us. We are to pray thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So Satan is working through the latent power of the soul and the disobedience of man through the first man, Adam, that dominion that was first given to man. He knows that that's man's rightful place. So he uses that power that was given to that first man. He uses it against man while promising to use it for man. He is empowering flesh. He is using the soul in his, in its latent power to be able to establish government, to use talent, psychic ability. It's using all these different forces of of demonic abilities. Witchcraft is using spiritual means to to get what the flesh wants. It's the empowerment of man's rebellious will. This is Nimrod and his kingdom. He was a hunter. The Bible says a mighty warrior against God in establishing a kingdom that said we will do it our way. We will build a we will build a tower to heaven. We'll build a kingdom that's, that God cannot judge, that will never be flooded again because the tower, the ziggurat, is so high, it will reach to heaven itself. We will dethrone God. We will put ourselves upon that throne. And really what was behind it was Lucifer and his desire to be like God and to establish his own kingdom. And he's using man and the deceptiveness of man and man working with him With rebellion, he is aiding him in establishing a secular humanistic society in the mind of the man while it was truly dominated by Luciferian thinking. Now, this kingdom, the kingdoms of men, shall now become the kingdoms of our God. That is the ultimate prophetic word, is that God is going to establish himself in the earth. He said, it's not here, it's not there. He said, but I'm going to put it within you. The kingdom of God is within you, in your own heart. So this is where we pray with the regeneration of man. Now, we want righteous people to be in authority. This is what God told us to pray. When the wicked rule, the people groan. When the righteous are in authority, the Bible says the people rejoice. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yehovah, is the Lord. So we do not just want to say, God bless America. We want to say, America, you need to bless God. So we want righteous people to be in authority. And this is how we pray. This is our desire. This is our passion. Today, there is much in flux. There are uh, House seats available. There are Senate seats available. There are many governors available uh, that are now, in other words, their positions are open. And we are praying for them. So Satan is using his power He's using his manipulation. He's using his um, prince and power of the air. He's using his messaging systems. And they're all in agreement. They're all in alignment. They all sound the same while at the same time espousing democracy or espousing freedom of choice. But everyone's kind of saying, of course, we know the choice that you should make. While at the same time, the church is not allowed to give any... um, Uh, advice at all towards these things because there is a separation between church and state. This is, of course, flipping the rule because in the original design of the founders of of America, they were basically saying the opposite, that, that the government should not be able to speak or control the church, that there should be a separation. In other words, the church should be allowed to influence society however it is, it feels, it's designed Uh, to do it. And the most powerful forces in those early days were pulpits, were preachers. Now we have this separation of powers in which they're telling us, get out of the uh, the public uh, 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 
public space or the public sector and just stay in your lane, stay in your religious lane. If we want your opinion, we'll go to church. In the meantime, you know, as you stay over there, the law forbids you to talk about politics. While at the same time, politics can talk about the church, can talk about faith, can talk about us, can, can uh, pass laws about the Bible, but the Bible is not allowed to speak into it. This is a flipping. This is a flipping of the true freedoms that this country was intended to have from the beginning by its founders. They were leaving the oppression oppression of England. They were leaving the oppression of the king to come here and be able to celebrate whichever denomination, whichever faith they desired to. Now, obviously, there was deism and there, was, uh, there were other atheists that were around. It was also accepted in the United States that whether you had faith or didn't have faith, but the whole point was you have freedom to practice and freedom of speech to speak. So we are now going back to our original source. We are saying that we were given by our creator certain inalienable rights. That is the rule of law over this land, that we get our privilege from our creator. So we are appealing to heaven today that God would bring us into the divine order that he had for these last days. So we are exercising the power that God has given to us to pray. So that was a lot of stream of just <laughs> revelation and flow in the spirit today. And I know that you're feeling it. I know you're sensing it today. We are going to pray together now. And I'm going to give one more prophetic insight for us for today. And uh, just a little pattern for us to pray. This is prayer nation. At its foundation is prayer patterns and people in agreement that are praying effectively. That God is anointing to pray in the present, to release the prophetic word, to use apostolic authority and government, to establish the kingdom of God in the earth, and to say there is no place where God's spirit does not operate or function. We see it all through the book of Acts. There were those that stood up against the king, uh, the kingdom of God. They stood up against, uh, whether it was a king or a governor, uh, God would judge them. Uh, we see this with uh, Herod, that he was eaten of worms because he didn't give God the glory. This is the voice of a, of a God and not the voice of a man. He was eaten of worms and he died. This was right after he attacked the church. This is right after he, he, he killed James and he put Peter in prison. Right after this, he was judged. So I want you to understand that God has a government. God has a kingdom. The church is the ecclesia. We are the highest government that's in the land. There is no higher government. Uh, we are the parallel uh, of Esther. Esther was the queen. The queen had more influence and power than Haman did. Haman only was perceived to have more power. And so this antichrist system only looks like it has more power. But the church, in its truth, when it is awakened and goes in before the throne, can dethrone, can bring down Haman, and can set up righteous authority in its place. So this is what we are praying for today. We are not praying for or against a party. We are praying for righteousness and against wickedness. We understand that both Republicans and Democrats can eat from the same trough, can be controlled by the same source. But what we are praying for is men of integrity, women of integrity, people that are righteous, and that will stand and allow the church to function in these last days in freedom, because the Bible says that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. That's the goal of righteous authority, that God would establish that righteous authority because he desires all men to be saved. We want to reach people on both sides of the aisle. We want to reach people on, in every spectrum, in every color, in every gender. No matter what uh, stripe that you have, the gospel is for you. But we want the people that are in authority to do what they did with Mordecai, that all the princes and all the provinces helped the people of God rather than hindering the people of God. They helped Mordecai, and the fear of the Jews came upon all of them. This is a type and shadow of the last day church, that there would be a respect and awe of how God is working through the people of God, and that they would have a great evangelism or drawing of a great harvest. That's God's ultimate goal. Change your heart, and you'll change a nation. Change what we want, what we desire, and it will change who we elect. If we want to change laws, it starts by changing people's lives. So the church has the ultimate influence because it is, it is a work that happens in people's hearts. So, Father, we pray today that you would turn the heart of America, 
That you would change us, oh God, from being a people that are just so self-reliant that we forget that in God we trust is embossed upon our coins. It's put upon our dollar bills. Oh God, it's, it's in our currency everywhere. And we know, Lord Jesus, that many people just trust money and they just use money to manipulate. But you said that we cannot serve God and mammon. Instead of serving mammon, we want mammon to serve you. We want to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, the prosperity that we need. Oh God, to raise up the poor and the disadvantaged and the underserved. We want to raise them up, Lord Jesus, for all the minorities that are out there that lack opportunity or that lack uh, the privileges that, have, that others that have more education or have more access to health care or have more access uh, to resources uh, that they use or that have uh, uh, clearer pathways for businesses. God, we want people from the inner city to the suburbs to all be well represented. But Lord, we want them, Lord Jesus, to not just have people in authority that are allocating more funds to them. We, we want there to be a flow of righteousness because when we are transformed and when we are empowered, you raise us up. You release us. The ultimate freedom, oh God, is the freedom that comes only from your Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from education alone. It doesn't come from political power alone. It doesn't come uh, from education alone. It doesn't come from, from money alone. It, it, it comes, Lord Jesus, from the power of the Holy Spirit. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And so we know that there is a, a fight every time that there's elections. There is a fight over the freedoms, the true sense of what freedom actually is in this land. And so we pray that you would bring down those who are wicked, that you would bring down those who are not righteous, those who have actively worked against you and worked against your word and worked against your people and tried to silence the very voice of truth and the very power of the Spirit of God to work in men's hearts to bring conviction and change of their life and their lifestyle. God, those who are unrighteous, bring them down. But put righteous men and women in authority in their place. Bring down this spirit of hate and, and establish again, oh God, this righteousness as you did with Mordecai. Overturn, oh God, every law. Overturn every principle that would destroy the work of evangelism or would stand in the way of your cross. For you purchased the right for all men to be saved. Lord Jesus, you are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We thank you, Father, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your will be done in the Senate. Let your will be done in every state. Let your will be done, Lord Jesus, in every election. Let your will be done, Lord Jesus, from the local, oh God, to the state, to, to the national level. We pray, Lord Jesus, for much of the world is influenced by what happens in America, what happens in Congress, what happens in the Senate, what happens amongst our governors, what happens in our states. What happens, oh God, in our school boards, in our judges, oh God, what happens in our counties, Lord Jesus, all of this, oh God, we, we do not want the groaning of those who are wicked being in power, but we want the rejoicing of the righteous being in power. And we thank you, Father, we push back the agenda of hell. We send it back where it came from. And we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would help us to see, oh God, a bringing together rather than a dividing of our nation. Lord, I know that there are different ideologies. I know that there is right and there is left and there is Republican and there's Democrat and there's independent. I know, Lord Jesus, that there are various viewpoints and various reasons. And we know that churches are working on both sides of the aisle. But we want to come together, Lord Jesus, for what is best for America and for its people. We want to see a true awakening in this land and a breakthrough Oh God, a, a repentance. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Heal our land today in Jesus' name. This is what we pray, Father, and we thank you for hearing us. All right, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, here's one quick word that I'm giving to you, and we're going to uh, not be long on the air today. I'm hoping to have uh, another broadcast tomorrow as a follow-up, uh, as, we, as we hear from the Lord and as we see what is happening uh, 
Uh, we find out more details about this election. It'll give us a little bit more direction uh, as to how to continue to pray. But as prayer nation, we could not have something this significant uh, and not invite people to pray together uh, today. Every every election is important. Every every season in which power is up for grabs, this is a time when we must pray again for the government of God to operate and to function in the world. And if we don't exercise both our rights as citizens and also our responsibility as saints, then uh, we have only complaint uh, in the in the future. We have only groaning. And then we begin to pray later when we could have done something about it now. So get out there and vote. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. Uh, but we do need to exercise uh, our responsibility and our privilege as Americans. For those of you that are praying from around the world, thank you for joining in and praying for us. Uh, thank you. We, we know that Americans sometimes can be arrogant. Forgive us. Uh, forgive us sometimes for thinking that the whole world revolves around us. It really should revolve around the will of God and around the throne of God, around the kingdom of God. So those of you that are affected by America, thank you for praying for us. Thank you for your humility, for your willingness to work with us and to support us. We want to be a support to you. We want the church uh, to be alive in America. 80% of the world's missionaries and 80% of the world's Bibles comes from the United States. We're a vital part of this, but we are not the only part of this. We want to see this revival continue to spread around the world. And we know there's many things happening that we don't know anything about. So thank God for those that are working uh, for the Lord around the world. That these elections may or may not have any effect upon you, but the government of God continues. So we just pray life and strength for all the body of Christ around the world in Jesus name. Now, this is something that's very fresh. I have been speaking this for a long time. But there's a very specific word that is connecting to this in 2 Kings uh, chapter number 7. I was on apostolic mentoring with uh, Charles Robinette yesterday, and I'll be back, Lord willing, next week. And I brought this up, and it ties into our next level warfare uh, message. But I just want to show you something that is really amazing here that, uh, that I, I, we, is a very highly focused. Now, I've taught on this a lot. But I'm not really focused like this. I want you to, I want you to see this now. In 2 Kings 7, um, it tells us as we open that there is a man who, le who the king leans upon. The man whom a lord, the Bible says, on whose hand the king leaned. So he answers the man of God or he responds in contrary to. So this man would be a political man. He is a Lord, a man of influence, a man who has delegated authority from the king, someone that the king takes counsel in, someone that is influenced by the king. And no doubt, all the while, from 2 Kings 6 all the way through 2 Kings 7, this man has been there. He has been in this process where the prophet has been giving prophetic words. He's been coming into the throne room or sending his servant into the throne room and telling him how to do strategy, how to do warfare against the, the Syrians who are now trying to ambush them. This prophetic word and this man of God who has God's authority is trying to show the kingdom of God here to this king that is working with the authority that governs over men. So God is trying to come alongside and teach Israel a lesson. And he's trying to teach this king a lesson. But there is someone that is in that high place that the king leans upon. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned. Whose hand the symbolic, the influence that he has, the authority that he has. I lean upon your hand. So when I lean upon you, I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to trust you. So there's people in high places that are postured around power that are political people. There is a political spirit that seeks to undermine the prophetic. I'm going to say it again. There is a contrast between the prophetic word and the political. There are those that operate in the motivation of the spirit and those that are operating in the manipulation of man. And this is where the demonic comes in. We see this, again, using the same pattern of Esther. It's our handbook. Is that Haman had a conspiracy. Haman had people in his circles that he trusted in that they cast the lots. This was 
to give a prognic, uh, 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 prognosticators, or these were soothsayers, these were psychics, these were people that were giving counsel to him uh, of how that they should approach, what they should do next. It was a force behind him. It's the same thing here, is that there are men that are behind. I, I talked to a, a very powerful man who senators and congressmen came to him all, uh, uh, oftentimes too because he was both a successful lawyer um, and he was a brilliant mind and he was very wealthy. So he told me, he said, I don't want to run for office. He said, I'd rather be the man behind the scenes that's telling them and advising them and telling them what to do. They're the ones with even more power. So it's not even just who's in the position of power. It's the people behind the throne that are sometimes even more powerful because they're swaying, they're moving. But the Bible says the king's heart is in the Lord's hand. And as the rivers of water, he turns it. So how does he turn it? He uses prophetic voices. He uses people praying. He uses the angelic. He uses his spirit. He moves in and brings thoughts and directions. And we see even with Jeremiah that his prophetic word was operating and functioning with much opposition around the throne. So there is an opposition between the political agendas and the will of God that comes through the prophetic. God is establishing his voice in the earth. He is establishing his church in the earth. And so with or without the cooperation of government, God's word and God's will is going to go forth. But it always helps when those who are in authority understand that they are put there by God and they have the fear of God. We pray for our mayor often here in Pasadena and we're very thankful for him. I remember when he came in, he said, uh, would you please pray for me? Got down on his knees. I need you and the other pastors of this community. And, and he got so humble, and I laid my hands upon him and prayed for him. The other day, I saw him again at another event, and um, he said, I know your church is praying for me. He said, I can feel it when you're praying for me. And I thanked him for the way he represents everybody in the city, uh, just no matter where they are. It's not just a good old boys club. It's whoever is in the city, he represents all of them, even if they didn't vote for him. He prays for them and represents them. And so our city is thriving. Pasadena is thriving and it's getting stronger and it's, and it's progressing and good things are happening here in our community. Our finances are being blessed and people are, are coming up. They're, they're, they're rising up. They're getting better educations and they're, obviously there's still problems, but we are, we're working together as a community and great things are happening here. This is what we want to see. Uh, across the board in all of politics. We want to see churches praying together and working together uh, and seeing God's kingdom advance and lives being changed, transformation. But it starts with us hearing from God and knowing how to pray effectively. And there is a battle for this. So this only contention that Elisha had was this man who contended with him. He said, if God would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? I'm, prophe I'm prophesying that things are about to change. You're going to go from famine to a feast in one day. Ah, he mocks him if God would open the windows of heaven. And there is a mocking spirit of the supernatural. There is a mocking of the prophetic. There is a mocking of the spiritual in the political realm. And he says to him, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. God released the prophet Elisha to address him. And this is a time in which God is allowing us permission. He never addressed him. He was working against him this whole time, but he never addressed him until now. And God is saying to us that he is going to start addressing people who have been in high places with a political spirit that have opposed the prophetic word, that have tried to oppose God's will and God's word and God's work and God's, here's another alliteration, God's witness in the earth they have tried to thwart it. God says, I'm going to bring my judgment against them. I'm going to bring them down. And it's time for there to be a showdown in the spirit. So this is a prophetic word for the body of Christ. We have permission to speak it. We have permission to declare it. Those with unbelief are going to be addressed. Those who have been in high places that have been influencing those who have authority, God is going to address them. And he's going to use unlikely people, overlooked, deplorables, as it were, the four leprous men in the gate. There are going to be people in the gate that everyone has discounted that don't think they have any power. God is going to empower the unlikely, the overlooked, 
the rejects. He's going to empower them. And these are the ones he's going to use to execute his will in these last days. So we're moving from the prophetic vision, from prophetic discernment, from a prophetic word, even from prophetic judgment, where there's a parallel. A blessing is being released over the kingdom. A blessing has been released over the nation. A blessing is being released over the people of God. At the same time, there is judgment to bring down those that have opposed it. Unbelief will be judged. This word is going to happen with or without you. Whether you believe it or don't believe it, it's too much. The, the, the current is too strong. God is too much vested in this. He is going to bring it to pass. If he, have to use, if he has to use lepers, he'll use lepers. But there is an angelic army that has been turned loose. We see it released in chapter 6. It's now operating here in chapter 7. And we're going to go into a season of executing the prophetic. We have been seeing it. Now we're going to move into the apostolic. God said the prophetic has prepared the way, has laid the foundation stones. Now get ready for apostolic networks. Get ready for the apostles to be empowered. Get ready for people to start executing the will of God. And things that seem impossible are going to start becoming possible. And it's happening now in the twilight of this spiritual day. It's going to happen even in the nighttime. You're going to watch it happen. And they're going to hear a noise. They're going to hear a sound. What is that sound? It's the sound of the armies of heaven that are advancing because God's people have prevailed in the spirit. The prophetic word is now established. This is not the time to let off the gas, intercessors. I know we're going into a holiday, but guess what? During the holidays, Satan is full bore. He is pushing the envelope as far as he can push it in every holiday because he knows people relax. It doesn't mean we're not going to have good quality time with our families, but we are going to stay consistent in prayer. I did some fasting today. Well, we just had a 40-day fast. Doesn't matter. We've got to still keep that spirit of fasting alive. There should be things we say no to uh, because we have to stay vigilant right now in Jesus' name. So let's pray together, and we're establishing God's word. You can feel the flow of it. You can feel the favor of God. Walk in that. Stand in it in Jesus' name. And all of these battles that have been happening to distract us and to drain us, God is reversing them. God is going to heal our bodies. He is going to release uh, energy, fresh energy to the church. There's a new anointing that we have been preaching and prophesying about that's getting stronger and stronger. The angels of the Lord are going to become more manifest. This fourth quarter of the year, there's going to be great advances. Great advances. Much territory is going to be taken. But we have to keep that territory and we have to... Uh, we have to occupy that territory. We have to execute that territory. And that's what God did with these four lepers. They walked into this amazing territory that they thought the enemy had. And they actually, they found out that actually the enemy was already gone. So folks, it's all there. It's right in front of us. And we're going to go possess it. Now, Father, we release it in Jesus' name. We take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. We break through our famine God, this generated famine, oh God, this, this, this architect of evil that has created this famine and this shortage. God, we thank you, Lord, that right outside, there are massive resources right outside our walls. And as we walk in the spirit and as we step and go forward towards our adversary, God, the angel armies are being heard, are being manifest. They're going to come into the earshot of our adversaries. They're going to enter into the human realm. They're going to step Lord Jesus, into the secular, into the space where we have not expected them to be. We expect the prophets to know and the prophets to see, but they're going to start getting into the, into the secular space, just as they did with Cornelius. Oh God, so Lord Jesus, just as they did with Herod and going into the prison and opening up the prison, they saw the angelic work. Just as gates were open, doors were open. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you are working right now and you are releasing us into the full resources of the kingdom for these last days. It's time to expedite. It's time to move it forward. It's time to advance in Jesus' name. We will not, we will not stay neutral, but we will move forward in Jesus' name. All those who have opposed the prophetic will be judged now. They will see it with their eyes, but they will not partake. It will happen with or without them. And I thank you for it. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise. Now, as we did our open, we talked about first man versus last man. 
These are the last days brought about by the last man, Adam. And we are functioning and operating by the potential, the unlimited work of grace. He had the spirit without measure. So the church has access to the spirit of God without measure. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace, John chapter one. It also says that which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all, Ephesians chapter one. It also tells us in chapter three of Ephesians that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. So all the fullness of the God had dwelt in him bodily as the last man, Adam. And guess what? That fullness is in the church and we have access to it when we agree in symphonia, in a when we agree in harmony together with one another. So we are releasing that cadence of heaven, that rhythm and alignment of this kingdom of God for these last days. Now, here's the awesome power of this. This is what God was showing me this, this very morning. This is fresh remote word for the body of Christ. And then we're going to close. It's so easy to flow because you all um, are there and operating and functioning in it. And so you just it just operates. It just flows out of all of us. So we're, we're stepping into this. Embrace it and accept it. Watch this now. Jesus has the key of David. He said, I close doors that no man can open. And I open doors that no man can close. By the power of the last man, Adam, the last church, the end time church. Guess what? We are functioning in our obedience in a superior place than those who are in disobedience. The obedience of one has canceled out the disobedience of one. What? Adam got us into, Jesus got us out of. By one man's sin, death came into the world. By one man's righteousness, by one man's obedience, now life from the dead, now resurrection. So we are now accomplishing through our obedience something that hell with all of its rebellion cannot stop. Hell without humans can do nothing. He has to have permission. Satan has no authority. He has to get permission for everything. He gets it from us or he gets it from God. We learn that. Satan's on a leash. He can do nothing without permission. Let that sink in. Nothing without permission. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth is mine. Ephesians 1 tells us that he gathers together all things in one, both in heaven and in earth, in the dispensation of the fullness of times. It's time for the church to operate in its fullness. Now, I shut doors that no man can open. That means no matter how rebellious they are, no matter what they're, trying to, what they're trying to close down, they can't shut it down. They cannot shut down the door that God has opened. We have a doorway. We have a gateway in the spirit. The heavens are open and nobody can shut them. There is not a man in the earth that can shut the door that God has opened for us. I want you to understand that. Now watch this. And no man, he said, and I close doors that no man can open. I open doors that no man can close. He controls it both ways. They are trying to open doors into the spirit world. And God says, if I want to close your door, you can't open it. I've opened a door and you can't close it. This is the power of binding and loosing. We are opening and closing doors in the spirit. The angels shut the door on those LGBTQ plus people that were in Sodom, that were trying to beat down uh, Lot in his house. The Bible says they shut the door and they blinded them. God can shut the door. He can close the agenda of hell. And I don't care how rebellious. The Bible says they wearied themselves trying to, trying to break down the door, but they couldn't. Because when God shuts the door, when the angelic power of God uh, operating according to the will of God, in alignment with the prayers of the intercessor, who was Abraham praying in the will of God. So Abraham's intercession and obedience released the angels to bring mercy before judgment and shut doors and agendas to pull out Lot and his family. That was an open door, an open door to get out. And... Abraham had an open door into the spirit to be able to talk directly to God and see the angels. So we're going to have doors that are open everywhere. We're going to have doors open to intercede and doors open to help redeem people out of the world. And guess what? When God opens the door, hell could not stop Abraham from being his friend and from interceding. And hell 
couldn't open a door that God closed when they were trying to put their agenda in motion. We just function in this. We just operate in this as the kingdom of God. So be encouraged today. Pray big prayers. Don't pray selfish, self-centered prayers today. Pray big prayers. Pray in the mind and the will of God and see what God will do. If you think this, this broadcast will help somebody, share it with them. Share it to your page. It'll be on YouTube later. Go ahead and share it with somebody. God bless you. Of course, we're praying specifically today, but we know that the principles here uh, apply beyond today. Use those principles, and God willing, I will see you tomorrow. We love you. God bless you. Don't stand in the shadows when you can stand in the full light of who Jesus is. The shadows have been fulfilled, and Jesus is that light. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon.